We thank God for this day, one of my favorite scriptures. This is the day that the Lord and I will rejoice in this day. I thank God for this day because I know that we are in a predicament causing believers to fall backwards. Believers are not really taking charge to take charge. Now is the time. If there was any other time to take charge in our lives, if there was any other time to take charge as being a child of God to win those into the household of faith, now is the time. When I see our name to our church, Trinity Family Life Center, it's got every name that we need to go and compel man, woman, boy, and girl to come into the household of faith. A place where you can find deliverance. A place where you can find healing. A place where you can hear the preaching and the teaching of the gospel. A place where you can be content and comfortable by being in the presence of God. Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, Trinity, family. We're supposed to be family. If God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is family, what does that say? That say we need to be family. It's a little more than just the name of the church. It gives our identity of who we are. Because God is showing us, God showing the church that man now's the time if there's any other time that churches need to come together from all over the world to come together and be one church now is the time Amen. I don't know about you but I'm not happy for what I see on my TV I am not happy I'm not happy because I Cry and, and I become very sorrowful because I see that the children of God are falling away from the wayside. In other words, they're finding everything to do but the right thing. That's why churches need to come together. That's why now is the time because we can no longer go and perpetrate of who we are. We don't perpetrate, we demonstrate. Why? Because God deserves to be known. He deserves to be shown. He deserves to have the light in front. He deserves to be the, the patriot. The, 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 he, he deserves to be the one who stands before us to show us what we need in this world. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 24 and 6, You'll find it. Preachers don't preach. You know why? Because preachers don't want to lose members. Well, I got news for you. I'm not in this to lose members. I'm in it to win members. <laughs> Matthew 24 and 6 it says it right there. It says, and you will hear wars and rumors of wars. Well, let me tell you something else. We've been in a war ever since we've been alive. It's no more wars. We are in a war. But not so much kingdom where you find people against war. Where folks are no longer trying to protect their own 
protecting their own personal identity, which means you mean nothing to me, which says it takes nothing for me to fight back. And God says, oh, no, that is not my agenda. Unless you're going to fight and stand for me, you have no need of fighting against one another. That's why the churches can't come together across the world. Because we're fighting against one another. We have a war that's going on in the churches that people are not thinking about coming together. I wish that one of our nation worldwide preachers will stand behind the podium and say, time out. I mandate this announcement that all churches across the world will come together and stand against the evil and the wows of the devil and we what he's trying to conquer. I could take the microphone and do that. Because the Bible is simply stating it's war. It rumors of war. And then when you read that verse, look what it says. Even though you see the turmoil that's happening in the world. Believers, here's an email from heaven. Don't be troubled. Don't be frantic. Don't get scared. Amen. Don't worry. We have nothing to worry about. We are not given the spirit of fear. That comes from the devil. If you are a believer and you fear, you have to go back and reevaluate who you are in the body of Christ. For Christ, I stand. You have nothing to worry about. You have nothing. To fear about. You know why? Because God said in his word, if I am before you, who can be against you? Now's the time. He says, I got this. Come here, God, just for a moment. God says, I got you. You don't have to pee. You don't have to be tall. Because he's got you. Walk, God. Everywhere I walk, God got me. And because I'm a believer, the Bible says I need not to be troubled. We worry about things we can't do anything about. And God is saying one thing here. You know what God is saying? God is saying that you're not troubling me. He's saying it. He's saying you are not trusting me. And when you don't trust me, you lose the faith. He says that there's no need to fear. Read it for yourself in verse 6. He says that. Don't be troubled, for these things must come to pass. All that we're seeing around us in the world, they must come to pass. But guess what, church? The end is still not here. You mean to tell me, looking at all that's around me, people not liking people, people not loving people, people not sharing the love to others, people not giving, people not praying, coming against one another. You have children that are being murdered, molested. You have broken families. Husband and wife don't get along. And you tell me the end is not here yet? I'm going to tell you why the end's not here. Because God is waiting for the church. He's waiting for the church to come together. Now's the time for the church to come together. The Bible says the end's not here, but where's the church? Where's the church while we have all of this time before the end comes? Where's the church? 
and the end's not here yet. Because we're worried and we're being troubled of our own personal lives. And God said, you don't need to do that. You're wasting too much time in that closet. You need to come out of that closet and just give yourself to me. I got you. Now's the time. That's what he says there in verse 6. He says, and the end is not here. He said, and remember this in verse 7. For nations shall rise against nation. In other words, people will come against one another. But the end is not here. You're going to see that, church. He's given us the ministry that you and I need to go out there and do. He's telling us that nations are going to come against one another. That's going to happen. Kingdoms are going to be fighting against one another. That is going to happen. Where's the church? Now's the time. That's what he says there. And as kingdom comes against the other kingdom, look what he says there. And there will be famines and there will be pestilence. We got this one mosquito. His name is what? Ibaka or whatever it is. Zika. Ibaka is the other virus, right? (laughs) Zika, Mr. Zika. A little bite will put you on your bed of affliction for 10 days. And if your immune system is not really built up, it will kill you. Pestilence. Mr. Zika has been around for a long time. It's just his now time to take his stage. He wasn't just created last year. He's been around. Now's the time. God's given us our warning. So we can go out here and minister to the unsaved. He's given us our warning. He said, and Mr. Zika, that's not going to be all. There's going to be someone coming behind him. I'm trying to warn you all that if we don't fix up this, we'll be victims of our own circumstances. He says, stop putting a Band-Aid over your problem. You're putting a Band-Aid over your situation when you should come to me for deliverance. And then I'll give you power. I'll empower you to go out. But you're putting a Band-Aid over it. You want it to be an excuse. And God says, I'm not an excuse. The purpose of why we took this communion is to always remember and commemorate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why we took communion. It's called fellowship. And that's what we need to do. He says there in verse 7, there's going to be earthquakes. That's not new. You know what's happening in China, Japan, all the other countries across the world, earthquakes. We just had one here two years ago in Pennsylvania that shook the earth in Ohio. We felt the remnants of it. But did that move anybody? Did that move the church? No. It got worse. It will never move the church until it starts happening to me. And God said, you don't have time to wait on that because one day I am coming back. And don't you be caught with your work undone. When I do come back, he says there in verse 8, he says, and listen to this. After I have given you the warning, after I have given your assignment, he says there in verse 8, all these things are just the beginning of sorrow. Oh, my God. Church, don't you see? Can't you hear what God is saying? He says, this is just the beginning of sorrowfulness. This is just the beginning when you turn on your TV, it makes you want to cry. It makes you, it should make you want to go to our prayer closet. Sorrowfulness. Sorrow times. We are in right now. 
and the end's not here yet. And what are we waiting on? Now's the time. What are we waiting on? I'm going to tell you what we're waiting on. We're waiting on our pension and our retirement. Some of us are paying more attention to our life insurance. God said, I'm your life insurance. I'm your life insurance. You don't have to worry about your family being being taken care of if you just put me in your business I got your family he said I will supply all of your needs according to what his riches are where in heaven that's what he said there we're in the wrong place at the right time and now is the time He says there in verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. That's not moving the church because it hasn't happened to me. (laughs) I got news for those who don't believe that the enemy does not like you. He doesn't care about you. He's got demons assigned to take you out. Pastor Tim spoke about it last week, demonic spirits. I hope you believe that they do exist because they do. There's one assigned to us every day. And if you're not caught up in your spiritual realm, the crack that you leave open, the crack where that little peak hole, where he can see and get in, he'll get in between that crack. That's why you have to wear Jesus tight. You have to wear Jesus close. You have to wear Jesus every day because you never know what you're going to walk into before that day of agenda is over. And the moment you let Jesus down, the moment you let your spiritual guard down, that enemy, he got you. The question is, I don't know how he's going to get me. You might not be able to withstand when that time comes. That's why I said, now's the time. Now's the time, church. Now's the time. Trinity, we already got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Family, we already have life. Because he is life. And he's the center of our life. That's why it's important for everybody to be here on August the 20th. Don't take that lightly. God has finally found a church that thought not about themselves, but thought about him. And we've come together to demonstrate, to win from all ends of the earth. You want to know what love is like? Come by Trinity Family Life Center. You want to know who Jesus is? Come by Trinity Family Life Center. You want to know how to mingle with good people? Come by Trinity Family Life Center. We're practicing the word of God. That's what God is asking for. And God has to have a church to start from somewhere. So he chose us. Now's the time. If we're ever going to come together, we got to come together right now. Not have selfish love, but have God's love. If we're going to be confident, be confident in the fact that I know that I can win my brother and sister to the body of Christ. How do I know that? Because my Bible tells me. It tells me that I can do this. Verse 10 says, and then... Many shall offend, be offended, and shall betray one another. I don't know about you. I've been betrayed in my lifetime. Have you? I've been betrayed. As a pastor, I got betrayed big time across the street. Didn't know it was for my perfection. Didn't know it at the time that it was for my perfection. It was to build me up for where God has taken me because I want to be ready. I want to be ready to face whatever comes my way. And if I flunk every test that he puts on me, I'll be no good for the kingdom. Many will offend you. Many will betray you. 
I'm going to tell you how to win betrayal. You win it with love. And then you add the ingredient of forgiveness. And watch what you come up with. You'll come out with Jesus. It's going to happen. This is Bible. Verse 11 says, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive you. This has nothing to do about the Antichrist. It's talking about those false preachers that we're contributing to. <laughs> Now's the time. These false preachers that are getting up talking about themselves more than God, tricking us to give to them so they can live off of your sowing, making them rich, but not the kingdom rich. False prophets that preach everything against the word of God, that turns this word around for their self-pleasure. Verse 12 says, and because of sin, because of iniquity shall abound, the love of so many people will wax cold. Now's the time. That's why I tell people all the time, you better evaluate before you tell me you love me. Because either your love is going to be hot or it's going to be cold. And many that are being waxed with the coldness. It's only because you lost your way. And God says, get back to the cross. You're being troubled. You're being confused. You're being misled. And God said, get back to the cross. That's where you're going to find your light so you can see where you're walking. Your love has waxed cold. How do I know my love has waxed cold? Because I can't feel the peace of God. I'm miserable all the time. I wake up where I just want to hurt somebody. Wax cold. That's what the scripture means. You don't care. Wax cold. 13 says, but he that shall endure to the end. I wish I had some endures in the house. I wish I had some, I don't care what they do out there. I'm going to endure to the end. This scripture has nothing to do about you being saved in the body of Christ. It's talking about if you believe right now, when this comes to pass, you won't have to worry. Come here, God. Because God's got you. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. You can walk through your temptation. You can walk through your tribulation. You can walk through your sorrows. You can walk through your affliction. Why? Because God's got you. You'll be all right. So I share with Trinity before I sit down. Let us not walk out of here without having a sense of understanding that God is waiting for the church to take its platform. Somebody has to shine. And God chose Trinity Family Life Center. We no longer can get all caught up about what happened. Now we got to kick, get caught up on what's going to happen. Get excited for what's going to happen. What's going to happen, Bishop? I can only tell you it's going to be good. That's all I can say. Why? Because I have no shame of my game. And Pastor Tim, he has no shame to his game. We just love one another. We just love each other, man. I love that man. And I know he loves me. And because we are the lovers of this ministry, man, that love can do nothing but spread all over this congregation. And Trinity will be the eastern gate to pull all the other gates into one gate. And we will stand. And God will get the glory. 
I wish I had some praisers in the house. I wish I had somebody that don't mind saying, God, I love you. I love you. Now's the time. Put it down. Church, just put it down. Put, 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 put the old weight down. Put that weight down. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. What burden are you carrying? Put it down. Now's the time. We no longer can act like. Now we have to show like. Now's the time. I've never been so happier, come here baby, in my life. All that me and this woman been through in our marriage and what the devil tried to do. We had no idea where God was taking us, but we knew God was taking us somewhere because could nobody go through that kind of confrontations and afflictions that came against this marriage? And we still stand. There was enough in there to go downtown and divorce three times. But we stood on the promises of God's word. And if it can work for us, it can work for you. Now's the time. I don't want you to walk out of here confused I want you to understand Pastor Tim and I are a team and when you have good team players <laughs> woo, that team will win and even when you fail it'll be a good loss because you have worked together you have planned your work and you've worked your plan and that's all God is, is, expects is that we just plan our work and work our plan and he'll do the rest. Before we end today, now's the time. Anyone want to come to the altar? We'll pray for you because I'm done. <laughs> I've done thus saith the Lord. Now's the time. You may come. The elders and ministers will, will pray for you. I don't want you to walk out of here with, with any ounce, any inch of discrepancy in your life. I want you to walk out of here free. It's not what Bishop Mel done today. I didn't do anything. I just spoke the word of God as a mouthpiece being a servant but you had to receive it anyone want to come you may come elders if you'll come for your glory